usually we find that normal eosinophil count is between 1 to 5 percent sometimes up to 7 percent can be seen but peripheral eosinophilia equal to or more than 10 percent of the total WBC count can be seen but it is a non-specific finding and may or may not be present. There are some individuals who do not have this esophagitis still they may have eosinophilia. There are other patients who have severe esophagitis and eosinophil levels may be normal. But in general, we various textbooks say that about 50 to 70 percent patients, you can remember 50 to 70 percent patients will have some degree of peripheral eosinophilia as well. Then we have elevated total serum IgE. Total serum IgE may be elevated in some of these individuals. Both of them are non-specific findings. The initial investigation that you do, the investigation of choice you can call it, that is endoscopy of the upper GIT. When you do endoscopy, any of the following patterns can be seen in these patients. First of all, you can find diffuse esophageal mucosal edema which will narrow down the lumen and there will be smoothening of the entire curvature of esophagus. Secondly, you may find rings being present. Thirdly, you will find exudates being present. For exudates will be there. Exudates are also sometimes called as localized microabscess formation. So, the alternative no term used for exudates is localized microabscess in esophagus. Then you may have furrows in the patient. Rings will be along the entire circumference. Fur furrows will be linear, right? And strictures will be seen in long-standing cases. So, these are the patterns that you find in pa these patients. Up to 30 percent, Nelson says, can have normal esophageal mucosa. So, Nelson 21st edition says that, you know, absence of endoscopic findings do not rule out eosinophilic esophagitis. However, their presence is a strong clue that the patient is indeed having the disease. Esophageal biopsy will show intense eosinophilic infiltrate with equal to or more than 15 eosinophils present per high power field. So, obviously, these are the three features. These are the three pictures that you need to remember, that you need to imprint in your mind visual potential MCQs can be asked upon this. Let us go one by one. This is the first pattern where you can see multiple exudates being present in a patient of eosinophilic esophagitis. They are also called as microabscess formation. Secondly, can you see that there are linear furrows being present in this patient? So, I will be using a different colored pen. Th this, can you see these furrows which are present like this? Some rings are also there, but some furrows are there. So, these are the ones what you call as, these linear ones are the ones you call as furrows. And look at the third one. Can you see trans circumferential, there are rings which are being present. This is the ring pattern of eosinophil like esophagitis. Two or more patterns can also coexist in the same patient. So, these are the different forms which tell you that the patient may be having eosinophilic esophagitis. Uh, potential MCQ one-liner. Extensive ring pattern as you can see in this picture, it is also called as tracheal ring pattern. So, just like trachea has rings, esophagus also gives a similar appearance. We call it as tracheal ring pattern of eosinophilic esophagitis. So, please mark it. This wording is not mentioned in Nelson, but it is mentioned in other review articles and also in the other standard textbooks. Please note that evaluation when you do for eosinophilic esophagitis that you should also include workup to identify coexisting food as well as skin allergies. You need to perform an allergen challenge test. You need to do a skin prick test for IgE mediated tests and you also need to do patch test for non-IgE mediated uh, various types of uh, you know allergic disorders that may be associated. Skin allergies also need to be looked out for. Patch test will help you in identifying that. Plus, in case the patient is having any family history or any features related to celiac disease, you can also consider doing serum total IgA with IgA variety of anti-TTG. But you will do, consider doing it if you are suspecting celiac disease in the patient. So, these are ancillary investigations that you will perform. So, what is the scoring system? There is a scoring system what you call as endoscopic score. Endoscopic score uh, is useful for measuring the activity, measuring the degree of endoscopic involvement 
in eosinophilic esophagitis and it has good role in not only diagnosing but also helping out with the response to therapy. The eosinophilic esophagitis endoscopic reference score is based upon the commonly observed features of edema, rings, exudates, furrows and structures. So these are the five features that is the acronym which it is based upon and it has utility not only in diagnosis but also in monitoring response to therapy. Suppose there is a high score of around 4, 5 or 6 total score and later on you find that on therapy the score is now reducing that shows there is a good response to therapy. So this is the grading system that we follow and then individual scores as well as total scores are sometimes calculated. Validation in children is a bit problematic. This score is not easy to perform because it requires repeated endoscopic examinations but at least theoretically you should know that this is one of the score that you can consider doing in children as well. So edema, you have three grades, grade 0 is normal, 1 is reduced, 2 is absent, rings will show none, mild, moderate and severe, then exudates will show none, mild and severe, involved, which is based upon how much of the surface area is involved due to exudate. Furrows, they are none, they are mild, they are severe and strictures, whether they are absent or present, you can have individual scores. When the original scoring system was initially proposed, some of the gastroenterologists started doing the total score. But now we know that individual component score is considered to be better and these are the ones which should be evaluated. Like you should be specifically mentioning that the patient is having E1, R2, E, you know this E will stand for vascular pattern, then exudate is 0 furrows are 1 and stricture is 0. You should not be writing it as total score as 4. This is the way it should be reported but the problem with this score is as I said it requires endoscopic evaluation and a single score is not that accurate. You need to have multiple serial uh, endoscopic examinations and thirdly you need a person who is well equipped with managing eosinophilic esophagitis diagnosing these patients. So their uh, utility in Indian system is still a bit you know dicey. You will not find this table being mentioned in Nelson although Nelson does mention two lines about this core system. Now how do you diagnose eosinophilic esophagitis? There is a specific criteria which has been called as agri criteria and question on this has been asked in super specialty exam. So the criteria says, firstly, there should be clinical feature evidence of esophageal dysfunction. So some esophageal symptoms should be there clinically. Plus, there should be esophageal epithelium showing eosinophil. But how many eosinophil? It should be either equal to or more than 15 eosinophils per high power field or equal to or more than 60 eosinophils per meter millimeter square of the sample biopsy specimen. Plus, there should be alternative etiologies including GERD which should be ruled out. So when you have all the three features being fulfilled, you say the patient is having eosinophilic esophagitis. So this is the point, this is the thing on which a potential MCQ can be asked in your exam.